G'day everyone. So on today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the next gen Raptor Ranger and the three liter twin turbo V6 EcoBoost engine that these vehicles come out with. Now, in general, the Ford engineers have done a really good job putting this motor together by incorporating such features as a forged crank, forged con rods, and a whole heap of other design features that make this motor very durable. However, in saying all that, I believe there is one item that needs addressing on this engine, and that is the wet belt driven oil pump. Now, the reason why Ford went to a wet belt design for the oil pump was to reduce fuel consumption and to also reduce engine noise. But in doing so, have they actually reduced the longevity of the engine itself? Well, I guess only time will tell. The good news is, is that these engines have been in production since 2017 in the Ford F-150s, and there have been next to zero failures. Ford says that these belts are rated for lifetime use, which means they're not part of the service schedule and you never have to replace them. And so far, this has been true with plenty of high mileage Ford F-150s rolling around that have so far withstood the test of time without any wet belt failures. Now, there are a number of things that you can do to extend the life of your wet belt and prevent it from premature failure. And that's what I'm gonna cover next. Number one is going to be using the correct viscosity and grade of oil, which is going to have the proper additives in it for belt longevity. Number two is going to be regular oil changes. Ford recommend between 12 to 16,000 kilometers for normal driving. I would recommend between eight to 10,000 kilometers for normal driving, and even more frequently if you're using your vehicle for a lot of towing or severe conditions. This would just give the wet belt an extra layer of protection and help you get the most life out of it. Now, if you ever have to remove the wet belt on your three liter EcoBoost, it is quite an extensive procedure as you have to remove the front timing cover as well as both the timing chains that drive the camshafts. This can be very expensive and time consuming. However, one good thing is the engine sump does not need to be removed. So that saves you a little bit of money and time. So that's our wrap up for this video. I hope it's been informative in some way to you and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.